奇跡の炎よ燃え上がれよ君の心に未来のため The first next generation DBZ game is here, but is it worth getting? This is no short answer, so grab a snack and here we go. The story ranges from the start of DBZ to the end of Cell. You have all the important fights in between them. When a battle calls for the villain to win, you get to play as that villain. Battles are picked from the menu which is divided between the sagas, which you're able to switch between freely. Nothing to really note here except for the drama pieces, but we'll go over those later in this review, and the cutscenes. The cutscenes are very true to the show and play in all the important parts, and they're probably the best part of the story mode. I don't need this planet anymore! I'm going to demolish you along with the rest of the Earth! Just try to dodge it if you can! And even if you survive, the Earth will be completely destroyed! Ah! I've got to try it! Kyle Dark 3! Kamehameha! The Earth to space dust! Ha! Can I open? Time's four! <laughs> I did it! While only 54 fights long, it's a chore to beat, honestly. The amount of fights you have to do more than once really gets old quickly. And apart from a few drama pieces here and there that retell parts of the story, you'll be wishing it was shorter by the time you start fighting Frieza. What is there to say about the graphics other than they are great? This game is a joy to look at and no one seems to dispute that. Everything from the slight blown the characters get from transformations to the water reflection off the wing of the plane in the background. The game is filled with little tiny details throughout. That being said, this is true for the character models and stages, but the attacks themselves are a bit bland. A good deal of the attacks simply look off to me. Without a doubt, the best looking DBG game. The sound effects are tried and true. Nothing wrong with them, but nothing really new either. Though, if you're working off something as old as DBZ and are using the sounds from the show, what more can you really do? As in many of the recent games, you have an option of both US and Japanese voices, so those who want the Japanese, go for it. The music is what I like the best, original soundtracks for the game. And yes, the Japanese version has the same music as well, so you didn't get screwed out of the original music. Gameplay. The core of any game. This is where the game seems to hit and miss with most people. But before we get into the fighting itself, let's look at all the game modes. Story we've already talked about, so let's cover Versus. You have your standard modes of all the combinations you can make between two players and a computer. So you pick your mode, your fighter, and your ultimate. Now this is where things get interesting. Now you have to pick your partner. No, this isn't for tag team, it's for who will come in to support on certain drama pieces. Again, we'll come back to drama pieces a little later. After you pick the match options, most notable of which are your stats. These are self-explanatory, but it's always nice to have to change your stats for whatever reason you might have. Now for the final option on this menu, online. The first thing you see is you have two options, single fight and ranking. Both are pretty self-explanatory. My main complaint here is how the interface works. It needs work. When you go to look for games that you want to play, you enter what you want and it searches for it, and that's all good, but why do I have to do it each time? Why can't I just set it as a filter and search for games? And why does it keep kicking you back to the main screen each time you have a match or not have anything else happen? 
gets the job done, but it could have been handled so much better. Maybe I just have bad luck with who I end up fighting, but all my matches were horrible. No, this wasn't a lag issue, but some matches got pretty bad. Nor is it an issue of fighting people who spam attacks over and over again. And it isn't just that I lost. No, what made it so horrible is people quit the game when they lose, causing them to get disconnected, and then the fight is recorded as if it never happened. Due to the huge number of people being completely lame, I would suggest playing only with people you know, or those you know won't be a complete douche. Trial mode is the challenge mode of the game. You have survival, in which you take on a gauntlet of 100 opponents, time attack, where you try to defeat 10 foes as quickly as possible, and finally, battle point mode, where you go for the highest score possible while fighting. The best part about the challenges this time around are the leaderboards are all online. So do your best and go for the high score. Now that we've covered the modes, let's look at the gameplay itself. First of all, a special note on the controls. The game forces you to have a button assigned for each command. This is very annoying to me as I find myself not using the knockback and wanting an additional guard button. While I can see some games locking you in on the controls, fighting games should let you do whatever you want with your controls. I'm surprised. I wouldn't have thought anyone human or alien could have come this far. A big part of gameplay, no matter what mode you play, are drama pieces. What is a drama piece? It can best be described as an event that happens in-game after certain conditions are met that changes the fight in some way. Once the conditions are met, the event will trigger automatically. There are many different effects that can come out of these events. Things ranging from health restoration to resetting your opponent's stats back to base. The fun thing about these scenes is your partner will say different things if you use the correct character, such as picking Raditz as your partner if you're a Goku. Not only will they say something different, but your fighter will comment on it as well. Some are pretty funny too. That was disappointing! Shut up! Stay out of this! They can also turn the tide of battle and generally they spice things up rather nicely. The bad part of them? They're all cutscenes. While well, fun for a bit, after a while you'll get sick of watching the same things over and over again. But you'll want to have that strength boost, so you'll want to equip them, thus putting you into a spiral of despair with seemingly no good solution. Do I turn them off and skip my modifiers, or do I leave them on and have them disturb the flow of the battle to make it more interesting? Overall, I would say leave them off and pray these are replaced by a more conventional item system. Now on to the fighting. The fighting has gone back to a 2D style with simpler attacks. At the same time, the fighting is incredibly fast and fluid. With the wide remains of options, both offensively and defensively, there's plenty to explore and plenty of strategies to adopt to defeat your opponent. Though that doesn't mean it's without its flaws. Normal key attacks don't use any of your key gauge. This makes it easy to spam attacks over and over. Now I know the usual argument is, you suck if you lose to someone who does that, but the point is, they should cost something in the first place. This combined with the auto fill rate of the gauge makes key management a thing of the past, sadly. Overall, a good system that gives you plenty of options on how you wish to fight them. Not a normal review category, but one I feel is important nonetheless. Just how much will this feel like DBZ to play it? Only going through Cell really holds this game back in its DBZ-ness. While the beam struggles last for a good bit of time and start from where the two attacks meet, it seems a good bit of attacks don't struggle at all, and the ones that do, it doesn't seem as over top as it should. They captured the feel in the cutscenes, but the in-game ones leave something to be desired. There's also plenty of minor issues with the game as well. Cell's aura is the wrong color, Special Beam Cannon is the wrong color, just little things like that across the game. On the plus side, you have these little exchanges. While not huge in the gameplay department, they are a very good example of the sort of combat you'd expect in a DBZ game. Add in the variety you get with them and they are a joy to watch. Another very DBZ-ish thing is the reactions from characters after taking a strong attack. Nice to finally see a game where the pain of the characters is felt in such a way. Too bad it's the same pose each time. We could sit here and nitpick this game for hours trying to find every last thing it did right and wrong, but the important question here is simple. If they left the game how it is, replaced the characters, and changed the story, would people call it a DBZ ripoff? 
probably so, so it passes as DBZ game. If you're looking for a good, solid fighting game, then you might want to at least check this one out. If you're a hardcore DBZ fan who wants a DBZ fighter and not just a fighting game with DBZ characters, you might want to look elsewhere.